It's election day. Voters are heading to the polls across the country in New Jersey and Virginia. Voters are casting ballots for governor in several cities, including Boston, Atlanta and Detroit. The mayor's office is up for grabs. And in New York, Mayor Bloomberg could be headed for the record book, spending over $100 million to try to keep his job. More than any candidate in U.S. history. It's an off-season election with the key races being seen as a bellwether for 2010 and major implications for a number of issues, including our firearm freedom. That's why even though Republican candidate Bob McDonald, Virginia, has a double-digit lead over his opponent, Craig Deeds, McDonald told the press he's not taking those polls for granted. We caught up with him in Mount Vernon, Virginia. Well, we've had a good day. I voted in Henrico County, and um, this is a little bit of a nostalgic day. This is my um, old home. I grew up right across the street in Riverside Estates and went to that school right there back when it was a middle school, and um, we feel uh, Excited about uh, the opportunities today. We've worked very hard for a couple years. We've got a terrific team of friends in the grassroots that have been working tirelessly on the phones, knocking on doors, putting up signs. And uh, of course, the polls are all tracking our way, but the only one that matters is the one that um, finishes at 7 o'clock tonight. So it would be a tremendous honor to serve as a governor of Virginia. In fact, I said in my speech uh, growing up in a you know, an average middle class neighborhood here in Fairfax County. I never dreamed I'd have the chance to follow in the footsteps of Jefferson and, uh, and uh, Henry. And yet I think we're close to getting that done. So it's really, uh, really exciting for me. And I wanted to be back here today. Are you it's happy that uh, Governor Palin has been making phone calls for to get out the vote? Well, I, I didn't know she was doing that. I think some other groups have done that. I'm glad to have anybody that wants to help me out there uh, advocating our cause. I'm glad to have her do that, but that, that, that wasn't something we did. You know, they talk about this as a referendum on the Obama administration. How do you see it? Well, I'm going to let other people, the experts, uh, make those kinds of decisions. I'll, I'll say this. One, I decided early on that we knew that the fiscal issues that faced Virginia were the ones that voters were most concerned about. Jobs, the economy, transportation. Uh, energy prices, tuition increases, and so forth. And so I staked out early on that I was going to make the heart and soul of my campaign about jobs, taxes, regulation, and the economy. Now, I also saw that there were some things happening in Congress that I didn't think were good for Virginia, and I think a governor ought to take a stand. And so I said some of the new taxes and new regulation and bills like card check and cap and trade and unfunded mandates on, uh, on Virginia businesses, that those were not good for Virginia. And so I took a strong stand opposing those, and my opponent was either ambivalent or for those bills. And I think that really has made a difference with the business community and with in independent voters who did not embrace these kinds of proposals. So to that degree, I think the national climate has had some impact in the race. And you're talking about a dramatic shift. Okay. But if elected, what are your first steps, especially in dealing with the economy? Well, we're, we're in a tough spot right now. We've cut $6.5 billion out of the budget in the last couple of years. We've got a 6.7%. Uh, unemployment rate. Those are the uh, overwhelming of the top issues that will face the next governor of Virginia. Uh, I believe I've outlined a detailed plan for how to address that. And to me, it's uh, it focuses a lot on small business. The entrepreneurs create 75 percent of the new jobs, and we want to have a reinvigoration of that free enterprise and entrepreneurial spirit in Virginia with tax and regulatory changes, one-stop permitting, faster turnaround time on permits. I'm going to focus a lot on the incentives to bring new businesses to Virginia. We're behind Carolina and Tennessee. We're behind Pacific Rim countries. We've got to do a lot better job being more aggressive in recruiting the businesses here. I'm going to focus a lot on the energy industry, tourism, film production. I've outlined some detailed plans to create new incentives to expand those industries. And But a lot of it, I think, is um, it's just being on the ground, listening to leaders in the public and private sector, and being positive and optimistic. You know, we're, I think we're about, uh, about to turn the corner. I mean, I, I think there's some positive signs that we see out there, uh, but it's going to take a leader that uh, understands business to go out there and say, look, here's the Virginia story. we got a great place to do business. Start a business here, come here, move your company here, and uh, we've got to get our people back to work. You just campaigned about... on bread and butter issues and kind of getting things done and dealing right. with roads and transportation and so forth, but you've been talking a little bit more about social issues lately, including abortion and so forth. Uh, do you plan to veto funding for Planned Parenthood? Well, I've talked about a, a number of things over the course of the campaign. I think everybody knows I've been a, a pro-life and a pro-family uh, legislator, and I think those traditional values that I learned uh, right here from my parents in Northern Virginia uh, are important. But I'm going to govern on the things I campaigned on, which are jobs, the economy, transportation, 
uh, keeping taxes and uh, and regulation low and, and building a transportation You'll system. You'll govern from the middle as opposed to from the no, right. No, I'm going to govern on getting results. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a conservative, I'm a fiscal conservative, and uh, everywhere I go in Virginia, people are telling me they cannot sustain more taxes and regulation, especially in light of what we see coming out of the Congress. They want to see government be more limited, more frugal, uh, to get results, to be more transparent, more accountable. I, I, want to, I want to retool government. I want to make it work better. We spend $76 billion every two years. I want to see that, uh, that money go a lot farther. So I'm going to be a, a common sense, practical, results-oriented uh, governor. And uh, I think that's what people expect. When, when you're traveling about, around, can you see that there's a shift, people concerned about their individual rights, their individual freedoms, things like the Second Amendment? Do you hear from that from a lot of people yeah, as you're I traveling do. around? I do. And, you know, we've been endorsed by a lot of those groups that uh, support those individual liberties, like the Fraternal Order Police, the, uh, the NRA, the Farm Bureau, that are concerned about property rights. And, um, you know, I believe my, my hero is George Washington. You know, my mom and my dad. Uh, both were on the board at Mount Vernon. My mom worked there for 18 years. I've studied Washington. I think he was a, uh, an incredible guy. I mean, we're standing on land that was originally owned by George Washington. This is incredible, incredible land right here. That's one of the reasons I wanted to come back today. And I, I read often of the, the uh, labor that our founders went through in order to preserve individual liberties. And that's why they enshrined them in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I think those things are important. Uh, and they're important to the people and they're important at every level of government to protect those. So, yes, I intend to be a supporter of, uh, of all those constitutional freedoms. Last question. We're just about halfway through the day. Uh, yeah. Turnout low in some areas. It's hard to know what's happening statewide. It could be the wild card in this race. What do you say to voters out there right now? Well, I say to them that uh, I love public service. I've been doing this for 33 years as an Army officer, a prosecutor, a legislator. Uh, Attorney General, I've got five children that are living here in Virginia that I will work hard for them and for their kids and grandkids to make sure we've got a brighter future. And uh, if uh, the people of Virginia are kind enough to hire me, I will work tirelessly to grow jobs, to turn this economy around with small business and entrepreneurship, uh, and uh, uplift the highest uh, ideals that this state uh, has uh, has put in place for uh, for many years. This really is the cradle of democracy, the birthplace of presidents, uh, many great things that have been said about Virginia. Uh, I love and cherish this state, and I want to see a brighter future for all of our people, and I'm going to get right to work uh, tomorrow if I'm fortunate to be elected.